The film starts in East Java in 1986, with Susanna and her fiancé Surya returning home. Upon arrival, they witness thugs insulting Susanna's parents. When Susanna approaches her parents, the leader of the thugs reveals that her father wagered their house and rice fields in a cockfight and lost, and Rad and Ario sent them here to collect her dad's debts. Surya asks him if is there another way, but the thug tells him to stay out of this as he is not their family. Susanna intervenes, pleading with the thug to allow them some time to resolve the issue. The thug questions how they will explain this to their boss. In a bid to buy time, Surya offers his goat, and the thug departs, promising to return in three days. The following day, Ario invites Susanna and her parents to a lavish feast, an experience they've never had before. Ario informs Susanna's father that he hasn't called them to discuss money because he already possesses everything in the world, except an heir. When Susanna inquires about his proposal, Ario expresses his desire for an heir to inherit all that he has built. He suggests that Susanna marry him and provide him with an heir, and he will forgive all the debts owed by his father. Susanna is compelled to marry Ario, and when Surya attempts to intervene, Ario's thugs try to forcibly remove him, leading to a chaotic situation. In the chaos, a fire breaks out, triggering a stampede. However, Surya is caught and Ario punishes him by whipping him in front of Susanna. Following this, Ario is on the verge of cutting off Surya's hands, but Susanna falls at Ario's feet, imploring him not to do so, and offers to do anything he wants, as long as he forgives Surya. Now after a few days, when Susanna suddenly wakes up, she sees that some movement is happening inside her blanket. In fear, she uncovers the blanket and gets shocked to find numerous snakes on her bed. When she tries to escape, she discovers that many snakes are crawling on the floor as well, prompting her to run out of her room. Later, Ario gathers the villagers and announces the bountiful harvest of the year. He shares the news that Susanna is currently pregnant and urges the villagers to join in prayer for the health of the long-awaited child he desires. That night, Ario's first wife Minati visits a shaman and expresses dissatisfaction, claiming that the snakes didn't fulfill their purpose. The shaman inquires about her desires, and she replies that she doesn't just want Susanna to die, she wishes for her to suffer before her demise. Meanwhile, Susanna is shown choking, and then she pulls out a lock of hair from inside her throat, leaving her terrified. After a few days, when Susanna goes shopping in the market, she encounters Surya working hard. As she approaches him, Surya notices her and starts moving away. Susanna follows him, tempting to engage in conversation. When she asks how he is, Surya questions whether she knows what it feels like for him to see her with another man's child. Susanna explains that she is doing this for her family and asks for his help if he still loves her. She expresses feeling in danger in Ario's house, with strange occurrences happening every day, suspecting that someone may be casting black magic on her. Surya is shocked to hear this, and Susanna reveals the lock of hair that emerged from her throat the previous night, expressing certainty that black magic is involved in these mysterious events. After a few days, Minani is once again seen with the shaman. She expresses frustration that Susanna's belly keeps growing and wonders why she isn't dead yet. The shaman suggests one last option, Benis body, a fireball curse that can ensure Susanna's death. But there is a cost. Minotis asks what it is, to which he says she has to sleep with him. Despite her anger at the audacious request, Minotis' intense jealousy towards Susanna leads her to reluctantly agree to the shaman's condition. Meanwhile, Susanna begins experiencing labor pains and calls her servant Ratty for assistance. But just then, her water breaks. We then see the shaman performing a ritual to put Banis body's curse on Susanna, and on the other hand, the midwife and Ratty help Susanna to deliver her baby. Susanna screams in extreme pain. So Ario enters to check in, but the midwife tells him that she can't see the baby yet. Meanwhile, the shaman continues the ritual, and the midwife and Ratty become terrified witnessing unusual movements inside Susanna's abdomen. Overcome with fear, they retreat to a corner of the room. Susanna, attempting to seek their help, moves towards them, but the baby shifts from her stomach to her back, causing her to fall onto the bed. Susanna screams in extreme pain and soon after, her back gets torn and explodes. Ario hears her screams and rushes into the room, startled by Susanna's distressing condition. As he approaches her, Susanna succumbs to her injuries. However, the baby is miraculously alive. Later, Minotti goes to Ario and tells him that if a person dies abnormally like that, she must be using black magic. She also informs him that Susanna gave birth on the night of Cleewan Friday. Ario inquires about the baby, and Minotti informs him that it's a healthy girl. Disappointed, Ario expresses his desire for a son, but Minotti consoles him, attributing it to fate. She assures Ario that she will take care of Susanna's funeral and ensure that the truth remains hidden. 
The following day, Surya intercepts Reddy to inquire about Susanna's well-being and also provides her with protective items against black magic. Unable to contain her emotions, Reddy reveals the tragic news that Susanna died during childbirth. She discloses that the baby emerged through Susanna's back, leading her to believe that black magic was involved. Shocked and angered, Surya demands to know who is responsible, but Reddy has no answer. That night, he goes to the cemetery where Susanna's body is buried. He digs up her grave, retrieves her body, and checks her back to confirm if Reddy was telling the truth. Overwhelmed with grief, Surya starts crying as he holds her in his arms, and eventually, he decides to take her body with him. The next morning, Surya wakes up to someone calling his name. He searches around but finds no one, so he resumes his journey with Susanna's body. After a while, he stops under a tree and acknowledges that he knows someone is following him. The voice inquires about the person he is carrying, and Surya reveals she was his lover who died due to black magic. The voice introduces himself as Samuel and questions Surya about his plans with his lover's body. Surya, uncertain, is asked if he desires to bring his lover back to life. Suspicious, Surya asks if Samuel is mocking him, but Samuel discloses that he is deaf. Shocked, Surya accuses him of being a demon, but Samuel clarifies that Susanna died with a vengeance, making her potential for revenge potent. Samuel proposes a deal to bring Susanna back to life, that Surya must give him the baby she gave birth to, as it is a child of death. Surya accepts the offer, and Samuel instructs him not to open his eyes, no matter what happens. He emphasizes once again that Surya must bring the baby to him, or he will reclaim his lover's soul. After a while, Samuel instructs him to open his eyes, and we see Susanna rising from the dead. Surya is overjoyed to see her alive, but his happiness fades away when he notices that the injury on her back is still there. Susanna asks him about her baby, and Surya becomes worried, realizing that she still remembers. She then notices the injury on her back and questions him about it. At that moment, they hear a baby crying, and Surya's attention shifts to a crow perched on a tree, and when he looks back, Susanna has mysteriously disappeared. Following the sound of the crying child, Susanna arrives at the scene where a mother is comforting her crying baby. As she observes the tender moment between the mother and child, she is overwhelmed with longing and sadness missing her child. Just then, a meatball seller passes by, and his gaze falls upon Susanna standing at the window. Startled and terrified, he promptly runs away from the scene. However, Susanna stops him and asks for meatballs. Playing along, he pretends to be blind and a bit deaf, asking her how many bowls she wants. She requests ten bowls, and out of fear, he hands them over. Surprisingly, Susanna then asks for ten more bowls, and by the time he turns back, she has devoured them all. As the meatball seller is about to serve her the meatballs, he is horrified to see that instead of meatballs, their eyes. Overwhelmed with fear, he screams and pleads with her not to harm him. Susanna asks him if he knows who she is, to which he responds negatively, mentioning that he is not from the village. At that moment, two men on bikes pass by, get frightened upon seeing Susanna, and accidentally fall into a drain. Terrified, they leave their bikes behind and flee the scene, and witnessing this, the meatball seller also runs away in fear. The man on the bike spreads the news about the ghost, emphasizing that there is a hole in the back of the ghost. Policeman Rojali attempts to reassure the villagers, claiming there are no ghosts in the village. However, the villagers insist otherwise, accusing the police of neglecting their duty. Another policeman reassures them, promising that if there is a ghost, they will catch it. Meanwhile, Surya is searching for Susanna in the forest. Susanna approaches him and confronts him, accusing him of lying to her. He asks her to clarify, and she questions why people are calling her a ghost. Surya apologizes and reveals the truth about her death, explaining that he made a deal with a demon to bring her back to life. Perplexed, she asks him why he did that, to which he confesses that it's because he loves her and wants to be with her forever. Susanna expresses her deep love for him and her desire to be with him forever, but questions if he isn't afraid of seeing her in this state. He responds that he doesn't care because he loves her, regardless of her current condition. Susanna insists that she must save her baby and cannot leave her in that house, especially alone with Ario and Minotti. The next day, Surya meets Reddy and asks for her help. He takes her with him to the forest and calls out for Susanna, and Reddy becomes frightened upon hearing her name. Surya instructs Reddy to wait while he ventures deeper into the forest to find Susanna. Meanwhile, Reddy hears a chilling female laugh around her, and her attention is drawn to Susanna sitting on a tree, causing her extreme fear. She attempts to run away, but Susanna swiftly appears in front of her, blocking her path. Just then, Surya intervenes and stops Susanna, informing her that Reddy can help them. 
Surya calms down Ratty and assures her that she is indeed Susanna. Ratty, still in disbelief, insists that she saw Susanna die with her own eyes that night and pleads not to involve her in this situation as she is nobody. Susanna intervenes, expressing her desire to see her baby, and Surya reassures Ratty that they won't force her to help, emphasizing that they only want to know how the baby is doing. Ratty informs them that the baby is healthy, but she expresses concern about the baby's safety. She fears that Minotti may want to harm the baby because she doesn't like her. Additionally, Ratty reveals that Minotti is in contact with a shaman named Jaya, who had warned Minotti about a supernatural entity wanting to enter their house, but he promised to protect her home with his powers. Susanna asks her why her parents are not protecting her baby, to which Ratty informs her that Aryo bought a new house for her parents in Surabaya, and all they know is that she died giving birth. That night, Ratty takes Surya to meet Jaya. Surya informs Jaya that they are aware he is protecting Aryo's house and requests him to lift the protection. He explains that Aryo and his wife are keeping a baby away from its mother, whose spirit has returned to reclaim the child. He warns Jaya that if he interferes, the spirit will come after him. However, Jaya laughs and confidently states that he believes Susanna doesn't stand a chance against him. He asserts that she can't even penetrate the protection of his amulet. Surya confronts Jaya, asking if he was the one who cursed Susanna, attempting to attack him. Surya is halted by Jaya's powers, who claims that Surya underestimates his strength. Jaya throws Surya back and inquires about his relationship with Susanna. Reddy attempts to intervene, but she is knocked down by Jaya. Surya pleads with Jaya to allow Susanna to live peacefully with her baby, but Jaya says that the woman who is brought back to life is not entirely his lover, but a vengeful spirit. Jaya attempts to harm Surya, but Reddy intervenes, getting stabbed instead. Despite the injury, Reddy manages to remove the locket from Jaya and throws it into the fire, burning it. As this occurs, Jaya's protection is lifted, allowing Surya to attack and knock him down. Surya then goes to check on Reddy, but she instructs him to take care of the baby before succumbing to her injuries. Just then, Jaya attacks Surya, rendering him unconscious, but before he can deliver a fatal blow, darkness envelops the area, and the house fills with Susanna's eerie laughter. Following this, Susanna appears behind Jaya, grabbing his head and killing him by causing it to explode. Meanwhile, we see Rojali and Japra setting up a trap to catch the ghost, hoping to become heroes. They hear a sound, hide, and then observe Susanna walking towards the offering. As she sits down, Japra lowers a cage to trap her, successfully imprisoning her. Now when both of them come to her, Japra identifies her as Susanna, the wife of Aryo. He approaches her, and Rojali goes to lift the cage. Japra inquires if everything is alright, to which Susanna explains that she had a fight with her husband, and when Rojali asks if he should bring Aryo here, she agrees. Japra takes Rojali aside and questions why he suggested bringing Aryo here. Rojali explains that if Aryo is pleased with them for finding and keeping his wife safe, he would owe them. Now because Rojali is oblivion, that's why Japra writes a note for Aryo stating that they found his wife, inviting him to come, and expresses the hope that Aryo can consider their debts paid. As Rojali walks toward Aryo's house with the note, it suddenly flies away with a gust of wind. After this, he reaches Aryo and informs him that his wife is in the forest. Aryo mentions that Minotti is afraid of the forest, but Rojali clarifies that he is talking about Susanna. Aryo is shocked to learn this and instructs Rojali to take him there. Meanwhile, Japra, who is in the forest with Susanna, feels a strong urge to urinate and leaves the area. Surya, watching all this secretly nearby, goes to Susanna and begins taking her away. However, she stops and informs him that they are bringing Aryo here. Surya explains that if something happens to Aryo, it will be harder for them to get her baby, and Minati can harm the baby. He shares his plan, suggesting that since Rojali and Jabra have already seen her, they can use their place as a hiding spot for her. After a while, Aryo reaches there with Jabra and Rojali. Aryo attempts to talk to her, but when Susanna turns around, her face changes. Aryo scolds Jabra and Rojali, stating that she is not Susanna. However, Japra and Rojali still see her as Susanna and assert that she is his wife. Frustrated, Aryo warns them that if they lie to him again, they will have to settle their debts tomorrow. Now because Rojali doesn't want to leave Susanna alone in the forest at night, he brings her to his home. Just then, someone knocks on the door, and Susanna suggests that he should answer it while she prepares the food. Outside, Japra tells Rojali that maybe what they saw was a human, and the ghost they were looking for was Susanna. Rojali mentions that they didn't see the hole in her back, to which Japra says ghosts can shapeshift. He asks him what Susanna was doing in the middle of the forest, and also mentions that Aryo's men said Susanna is dead. Rojali gets fright knowing this, 
but Japper reveals the ashes of a deceased person, explaining that according to his grandma, ghosts will be burned if they come into contact with ashes. They then both enter the house and sit with her, and Japper tells Rojali that he got some powdered ginger fresh from the garden and asks him to serve them. As Rojali heads to the kitchen, Fazan offers Japper some noodles. Upon Rojali's return, Japper notices he has brought glasses of ashes for all three of them. Japper prevents Rojali from drinking it, explaining it's intended for Susanna, and that drinking it first would be impolite. Upon hearing Susanna's dislike for ginger, Rojali takes a sip, only to spit it out as the noodles transform into maggots. An angered Susanna rises, but Japper cautions her against moving, citing potential harm from the ashes. To their surprise, the ashes vanish, and they discover Susanna holding the jar. She shatters it, releasing the ashes into the air, and transforms back into her ghostly form, revealing a hole in her back. Terrified, Japra and Rojali attempt to escape, but they tumble down, and Japra abandons Rojali in his haste to flee. Surya brings them both back and tells them that she is Susanna. He explains that Ario and Minati paid a shaman to use black magic on her, and the shaman also killed Rani. He adds that if they don't get Ario and Minati, Susanna's baby might be in danger too, he says he wants Rojali's help and requests him to let Susanna stay with him. The next day, Minati visits Jaya and becomes terrified upon seeing his lifeless body there. Now that night, while Minati is combing her hair, she feels something off with her hair, and she gets terrified when she sees Susanna right above her. However, Susanna disappears the next moment. Minati gets up and hears Susanna's eerie laugh. Suddenly, Susanna attacks her from behind, but Ario arrives just in time. Minati urges him to pay someone to protect their house from Susanna, to which he tells her that Susanna is dead. She then reveals that she went to the shaman's house, the one she paid to protect their house, but he is dead. Minati takes Ario to Susanna's grave and informs him that she has risen from her grave. Ario dismisses it, suggesting that Surya must be responsible. Minati insists that it's not human work, as the shaman's head was in pieces. She urges Ario to trust her, emphasizing that they are the next victims of this supernatural force. Ario questions Minati about why she used black magic on Susanna, to which she confesses it was out of jealousy. Ario expresses frustration, blaming her for the current situation, and walks away. Later, they call a shaman to get rid of Susanna's ghost, and seeing Susanna's baby, he says if that woman has turned into something supernatural, she will come here for her baby. He then gives Minati some things that will protect her from that being's powers, and he will return once he senses its presence. Minati asks him if should they hire more men to protect the house, to which he says it's useless. The next night, Japra and Rajali ask Ario's thugs aren't they going to the party. They suggest they go to the party for an hour, and after their return, they both will leave. Thugs likes their idea and asks Gus about it, and he permits them to go. Now at the party, we see that Susanna has taken the form of a beautiful girl and she makes Ario's goons completely drunk. Afterward, she visits Ario's house where he asks her where she has been and she claims she visited her ill mother. Ario reprimands her for not informing them, especially since she is in charge of the baby, and instructs her to go inside. As she goes in, Ario asks Rojali and Japra where are the others. Japra says they are at the party, to which he asks Japra to come with him to take them back. Meanwhile, Reddy is heading towards the child's room, but Minati stops her and asks where she has been. Reddy explains that her mom fell sick yesterday, and she already informed Ario about it. She says she is going to check on the baby and then leaves there. Minati doubts Rada's explanation and decides to follow her, and she notices a foul smell in the air. Reddy gets emotional that she will see her baby finally, but she is shocked to see that the crib is empty and this makes her angry. She goes out and asks Minati where is the baby, and Minati responds by showing her the object given by the shaman. However, Reddy does not react to it and asks her what is it, to which she says it's nothing, and the baby is in her bedroom. As Reddy leaves, Minati uses the mirror given by Shaman to see her, and she gets terrified seeing that she is not ready but Susanna. Susanna turns her head towards her to look at her, and as Minati shows her that object, Susanna returns to her true form, and all the lights in the house explode, creating a dramatic and intense atmosphere. Gus enters the house to check on Minati and is startled to see Susanna's reflection in the mirror behind him, but when he turns around, she's nowhere to be found, intensifying the suspense. Abruptly, she appears in front of him, causing him to stumble. Now when he tries to flee, he finds Susanna blocking his way, and maggots from her decaying wound fall onto his face and into his mouth. Susanna then throws him aside and then drags him into the darkness. Meanwhile, Ario returns with his goons, and Rojali tells him that he heard a scream from inside the house and then the light went off. 
Ario enters the house and finds Gus's dead body, who was brutally killed. He then proceeds to check on Minotti, and finds her scared sitting in the corner of their bathroom. He tries to calm her down but she says Susanna wants to kill her. Ario says they need to leave the place and after a while, other thugs enters the house looking for them. However, they find Surya there and they try to attack and kill him, but Surya fights with them. Meanwhile, Susanna haunts one of the thugs before materializing in front of him. Despite his attempts to harm her, none of his attacks affect Susanna. With a powerful strike, she tosses him away, and he tumbles into the fireplace, igniting in flames. On the other hand, the remaining thugs capture Surya. Before they can execute him, Susanna intervenes to thwart their plans and save Surya. Using her supernatural abilities, she bends the machete wielded by one thug, while another knocks Surya to the ground. The antagonist begins playing a flute, weakening Susanna, and the other thug reveals a dagger crafted from Kai Sabrang's Chris Blade, purportedly designed to slay powerful demons like her. Seizing an opportunity, Surya lunges at the flute player, allowing Susanna to eliminate both threats. She confronts Minati and Ario, who attempts to use her child as a barrier. The shaman arrives, launching an attack, and Ario shoots Susanna, causing her to collapse onto a table. Surya intervenes, assaulting Ario and severing his finger with a machete. Meanwhile, as the shaman prepares to deliver a fatal blow to Susanna, Ario and Surya tumble out, distracting the shaman, and Surya gets a chance to grab the gun and shoot the shaman. Weakened by the shaman's blows, Susanna collapses, and Surya removes all the nails from her body. Empowered, Susanna uses the same nails to attack and eliminate the shaman. She then raises the gun to kill Ario. However, Surya intervenes, urging her not to kill him, emphasizing the need to pursue Minati, who has her child, but she decides to kill him. She then goes after Minati, who tries to run away from her, and she warns her not to move forward or she will kill her child. She then throws away the child, but Susanna with her powers manages to save her. Susanna goes to check on her child and holds her in her arms, after which she confronts Minati. While she is busy dealing with Minati, Surya holds the child, and then Susanna delivers poetic justice to Minati, replicating the death Minati inflicted upon her by tearing her back. She then asks Surya to give her baby to her and tells him to kill the baby so they can live together forever. However, Surya realizes that he cannot do this, so he stabs that nail on her head. She asks him why he did this. But Surya remains silent as he watches her dying in front of him. Apologizing to Susanna, he confronts the harsh reality of their history. He emphasizes the importance of embracing the past for the sake of their child's well-being and the love they once shared. He requests her patience, promising to reunite with her, so they can be together once again. The next day, as he goes to bury Susanna, Samuel says he lied. Surya acknowledges Samuel's expertise in deceit, and Samuel questions about choosing the baby over Susanna. Surya responds that one day, he will face death, and at that time, Thamel can claim him. However, the baby is not his. She didn't choose to be born into this world. Surya sees allowing the child to live her best life before he dies as his self-imposed punishment in this world for attempting to strike a deal with Samuel. Thanks for joining us on our horror movie recap adventure. If you enjoyed the chills, subscribing would mean a lot. Drop a comment to share your thoughts and keep the terror alive. Stay spooky and see you soon.